Hello folks, right, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe please. Thank you very much to all them if you're still here and you're willing to put up with my jibber jabber then, fair enough. Anyway, we're going to start a new kit and yes I've pulled out from the depths of my Wingnut collection the beautiful Albatross. Don't know what it is, I just like its design, like its flaws, and it's, it's basically its characteristics and all its beautiful colour schemes that you could possibly do. Anyway, uh, the main name of this is there is a Albatross group build out there on Facebook. I saw it uh, on Speak of the Devil, the instruction just fell down. <laughs> Saw it on Facebook and literally it started the 1st of August and ends the 1st of December. And it is quite simple. Build an albatross kit. That is it. Obviously, it's either got to be the wing nut or the rodent kit in one thirty second. That is it. Okay. So, anyway, this is the only one I have at this moment in time. And I'm planning to do the, the very bottom one there. Um... I don't think you can see on the screen, but that the very last one. I am tempted by the all red one, but then I'd probably get the uh, a red baron version to do that one. It just looks too red to me, and an albatross in an all red doesn't look too that well. You get what I mean? So yeah. Anyway, um, if you remember, I did do an all wooden construction on an albatross. That was the Edward kit that actually won some good place at Telford. I got me a bronze award, I think. So yeah, that's really that. Anyway, we're going to put that aside. I need to... You know when I said to you a couple of minutes ago, are you prepared for the rambling and waffling I do? So yeah, right. <laughs> I almost forgot. It's actually quite a big bird compared to my hand size. Try to get to the schemes on the bottom. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Got ya. <laughs> Right, so as always, we're going to start off with painting the wood grain, which I'll come back to in a bit. And this is our dirt version. So, obviously, this is the Flying Circus versions. And, yeah, I'm going to be doing this one at the bottom here. I'm, I'm leaning more towards it because I just don't know. I like the white spinner and, the, and obviously the art on the fuselage. I don't know why, but there we go. Uh, I think this top one here, a lot of people have gone obviously for this scheme. Uh, it's a all red scheme, obviously yellow and black tail. It looks too red to me, not too sure on that. Uh, the, the black and white scheme, I will admit, that does look actually pretty neat, but once again, not my scheme. Too green. And obviously, I like a bit of natural wood finish in my aircraft. Many particularly, I like to give myself a challenge, so is either this one or this one and I decided this one. Okay, uh, this is flown by Carl hmm, Carl Maj Mia Dirks, I think that says. Let's see if you are in focus. Doesn't help the light is shining down. There we go. Refocus you guys. Sorry about that. Right, so this one I'm gonna be doing. The scheme here. So actually pretty good, so actually you get all these wonderful schemes in here. And then obviously it's printed on the back here. So there we go, there's our weird camo wings being placed on there. And we <laughs> talk about the devil. And uh, it basically gives us a bit of information. Uh, car mix served in Yasta 12 from the 17th of July 1917 and he was transferred to Yasta 40 in August 1917 where he would score his first victory. Uh, he would transfer to Yasta 55 in January 1918. He scored his second victory, victory and commanded it from April until he was shot down and killed on the 4th of May 1918. He was 21. Note the flare rack the tube around the cockpit and behind the rear carriage leg and the axle fairings had been removed. A black band around the nose and cowlings with a rear, rear fuselage, with black rear fuselage and a tailplane was the Yasta 12 marking. So that is it. That's the one I'm going to be doing. 
what I'm more le leaning to now. I did like this one. Let me see. It does have a. Hmm. I am more towards this one, but there's this one as well with this white band across the back. Yeah. There's photographs of the one I was going to do. Well, that's the photographs of the one I was thinking of doing. Obviously, it was shot down and captured, and you've got some British troops around it. Quite tempting, I'm not going to lie. Quite very tempting indeed. Hmm. I'll just have to see how it goes. So there we go, it's either this one or black tail. I do like the black tail on that one, so it does look pretty darn good. Anyway, that's where we're going to start, but before we do anything, we're going to be starting on the wood grain. Now, one of my favourite techniques to do with a any kit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuselage pieces, which are just in here, and simply what we do is we're going to be giving them some coats of paint. So, obviously we're going to give it a primer colour of just natural white. I, I don't normally do Vallejo paints, but I'm going to give it a go. If not, go back to the good old Tamiya. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be using some XF60 as the base colour. And then we're going to be using some oils to go over the top. And that is where it stands. So this that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a nice base coat. Yeah, nice base coat of white. Right to you guys. Back. Uh, right. <laughs> Here's some of the parts I did earlier. They've all been painted up. There we go. Hate having to refocus that, but it's the only way I can do it. They've all been painted in XF60, dark yellow from Tamiya. And we're just going to do the same with the fuselage halves just here. Okay, been primed in white, I had to use the uh, Tamiya in the end. The model there was a bit, what's the word I'm looking for? But it, it dries quickly in the nozzle, that's the only thing I have of it. So, anyway, what we're going to do is we give it a whole coat of XF60. Just like that, it gives it a nice tone. A really nice colour that is not gonna lie. So you can see that's a really nice colour. Make sure not to miss a single piece. And same again, just down here. Actually I'm just gonna turn the camera around and get a better angle. So yeah, it's much better angle doing it from this side. There we go. Just gives it that nice colour you can see just in there. There you have it. Not gonna lie. That's a really nice colour. Anyway, oh, I'll about charge this up. Would be helpful, wouldn't it? I mean, we do need air to get the first airbrush. There we have it. Right, so it does come up a nice colour. If you want to learn how I do my wood grain, then please go and watch the video. Um, it's quite a couple of, uh, probably last year now I did it. Was it last year or this year? Last year. And there we go. So anyway, that's the main base coat of all the paints all dried up and done. I really do like the details that come out. The only problem I've got, that can shut up now actually because that's some last time I'm using it tonight. The only issue I have with the kit so far is there's some tiny little injectors. Some tiny little injector pin marks. That's so trying. 
It's not going to work. Come on. There we go. That's much better. Then we can see. But you won't be able to see as well. Just in line there. You can see one just. Where is it? One just there. You can just make it out. I've tried to sand them down. But the detail. There we go. You can see them now just there visibly popping up. I'm probably saying that side. But yeah, I'm really liking this wood grain. It's really coming out. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry a bit and then we'll come back two seconds and I'll show you the next step. Rightio, I'm back. Right, just show you guys. So I'm my door creaked. Zoom you in. And we're going to do, if I can, a bit of work on this is really really weird okay so I'm trying to show you is any better? there we go right I put some oil onto a bit of tissue paper I'm just going to take quite a bit leave on the end of the paintbrush just an old paintbrush we're going to need And what we do is we get into all the cracks, all like so. And we'll let you just drag it across, like so. So we're going to get all the nice little grooves in the wood grain. You can see it just started to form just like so. And there we are. It's as simple as that and it does give a nice technique. The only issue is that it does take very, very long time to dry. So you have to have your patience when this comes up. Can use one of these and drag it across. Just this is not not an oil brush. This is a um, a weathering brush. Well, it's just dragging up oil across to give it that wood grain effect. It's actually starting to come through a bit now, like so. And that is where we leave it, it does come out as a nice wood grain it's kind of difficult to try and show you because it's still in the sprue I mean it would be helpful if I actually removed it from the sprue there you go right, simple as that, it just takes a while to dry but we'll get that done and dusted for you guys right, bit of a change, I'm not going to lie <laughs> uh, obviously as you know, I primed it white to start off with and then I went over in the dark yellow colour. I then, furthermore, I, don't, I can't remember if I recorded this, I think I did, forgive me, because it's a couple of days later, I did the oil wash, well not the oil wash, the oil painting, but it came out just a bit darker than what I hoped for. So I went back to my um, the original albatross build I did with the Edward and I used a different colour so I managed to find it out. Used some yellow orch instead and um, I primed it black white so just gives out I just I don't know why I just prefer to use a more of a lighter colour than the typical wood thing. Don't ask me why I just prefer to. Anyway I've got a bit on the end and so we'll see how it goes off because it does look better I'm not gonna lie. So start off with getting all the little cracks and that lot, like so. Go 
going to use a bit of uh, thinner for this, actually. Just a little bit, just a little bit there. Just to thin it down just a touch. There we go, that's better. <laughs> that's it, just all in there. There you go. Yeah, it does look actually much better. I do prefer the light pine look than to the dark oak. I don't know why. Don't ask me. But there we go. And it's as simple as that. Now, because I thinned it down, this should not take as long to dry properly. But yeah, but just like that, you can tell it's already changed its appearance greatly. We can go over again, get all that lighting out and such. There we go guys. Right, well I'm going to carry on because I'm not going to bore you to death. I'm going to get it all sorted and done. Ok guys, took the back plate off in order to fit this little sod in. Won't go in place. There we go. Easy as simple as that. Uh, I'm not too sure about the leather, it does actually look okay, not going to lie, it does look very worn. I primed it black first, the seat, and then went over certain bits and pieces here and there, just to get it all framed up and such. Okay, um, looks okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure if it's actually going to be visible from when it's the cockpit's all in place. Okay, just in a snower case, I'll get it all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this actually has turned out very fiddly than what I actually would think it would do. Okay, um Okay, just look at the instructions. Ah, oh, okay, right. <laughs> God come on Michael, put yourself together. It just really is just a weird, weird fit. Go lie. God. Right, this is actually all complex, I'm not gonna lie. Should have it all in by Christmas, there we go. Right. Here we go. Here we go guys. Finally getting somewhere. failing quite badly. Piece into there, that piece into there. And last but not least, a bit of glue. There we go. Right, so a bit of complex journey, not gonna lie. I think we finally all started to get into shape and place. It just needs a bit of a squeeze into the socket, but that's about it. There we go. Right, so that is all in place. Took a while, not gonna lie. But yep, yeah, that's all done, and it does look grand, not going to lie. It does look pretty darn good. Okay. I'm going to need to stop saying okay. There we go. There we go, that's better for you guys. 
bit of a pain really that was see where it just keeps popping up just there and there okay right I'm going to leave it to dry sort out and then come back hopefully get the rest wobble wobble <laughs> the rest of it done hello there folks right the albatross we are going to be cracking on with some of the interior work more of obviously it's more of the frame works we have <laughs> that's very nice if you ask me and um, this frame connects with the rest of the aircraft to ho house all the fuel tanks and the magazine pods pretty much so anyway we have the magazine cartridge here it basically fits on like so now I have to remember which I I'm going to admit didn't I completely forgot that wing nut wings kits literally you've got to have them fit so perfect there's no issue at all with them okay like so put some glue onto those pegs those pegs like that so get that in sorted now if we, oh actually no this stays on top so this is the top where the spandals would fit onto this is the empty belt container which is going in like so like that and then we simply normally would put the um, oh goodness me what is it called the uh, I won't say control stick rudder pedals we put in here but we're going to leave that till the two frames go together it's that in place like so are they supposed to line up or are they supposed to be have a look. Um, just by the instructions two seconds. Do you need to check this out? This spandles fit in. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a quick look. Right. I can't see anything of how they fit on. There we go. So, that's the belt at the side. Okay, so it should be both in line apparently. Both in line with each other, I believe so. So right, that should be in place, I'm going to glue that all in, get it all nice and done, so we have no issues. And then last but not least we have the fuel tank. Now we have the empty, I think they're the magazine sendries or whatever, whatever you want to call them. That just clips into the other side like that. Hardly any glue needed, but I'm just going to a tiny little spot in there. And this fits onto the other side. He says. I believe into there. Doesn't say exactly how it fits in or whatever so I don't want to press this too down hard in case it breaks it just really need a great big clamp to hold in place really yeah this is what I mean by wing nuts kits are just so damn tight to fit together so you need to scratch some of the paint off in order to get at it so 
how tight they fit in place. Tiny little lip. Yep, just a tiny little lip that's stopping it falling into place. Really mess this up to us. that's how it fits into place forgive me if I'm wrong but there we go so I'll just quick check of here okay right yep that's all correct that's all in place like that so as simple as that guys that's all in it does um, just connect like that Just uh, take this out a second. I'm not touching anything with that finger because I've just put a tiny bit of glue on it. There we go. Right, so that's all in place and done. That should be all drying up now. All ready to go. So if that's all done, I'm going to leave that to dry fully. We go come back. I may do a bit of. Oh. I may come back and do some uh, weathering on the product. But apart from that, that's all in place. We're going to leave it to dry. Come back in two seconds. Hello there, folks. Right back for some more of the albatross. So I went away and did the all the tank, as you saw. All the magazine cartridges. Hold on two seconds. Get that to manual. Let's have a look. There you go. Right, so that's pretty much spot on. Yammer casing. Of course, on the tank you've also got all the stains and the fuel. Just sat there. Got the framework of the, the seat. Very flimsy. Very flimsy indeed. And I've also put like little tiny bits in the bottom of here. For example, if I can just fetch it out. If he says, might do some way around this anyway. This looks a bit, yeah. Let's have a look. Hmm. There you go. There you go. All sorted really, just a case of getting everything sorted. See, two seconds. There you go. Sorry, I was just playing messing about with the camera. Right, so anyway, with well, that's all that done, we're going to get this side starting to make a progress so first off is we're going to put this frame into the, the back here I'm going to put some nice thick glue onto the edges here just so you can get into the cracks now with this one you have to be very careful you have to line everything up spot on otherwise the fuselage halves do not connect together which is something you guys do not never ever want right, that's in place now we just see how this fits in Mm 
There we go. Okay. So I just took our shell camera. I will snap it makes it goes in place. There we go. Right. So now it's a case of holding that all in there while we glue it together. I think you just see off camera. Sort of. Literally okay, just hold it all together and get some quick setting glue into all these cracks down here. <coughs> My phone just randomly goes off. There we have it. Right, so like I said, it's just a case of get everything sorted out. I'm leaving it to dry, really, and that is the fusel shell. Doesn't that look really nice? Beautiful. Now, the only issue is now we've also got this piece put in. Uh, I think it folds in like that. So, so once again, here we go. I'm going to put some thick glue on the edge of here. Use a bit extra thick glue because we've used a bit of a. Uh, obviously, the wood grain is done all by oil paints. Like so. Okay, dokie then. Just get all. Same situation for getting all the joins. Like so. And then once again we go and make sure it all fits into place. You always have to be on your guard when putting these kits together. Like so. There we go. Doesn't that look spot on, drop dead gorgeous? Let me refocus it for you. There you go. Doesn't that look gorgeous all sat in there? Hmm. It's just a shame obviously all this will be closed up because when the top wing goes on, but there we are. You win some, you lose some as they say. There you go. Right here guys, with that done, I'm going to leave these parts to dry. Make sure everything's secure and done. And then we'll come back and we'll see how we get on then. See you in a second. Hello guys, right, I know you're just a bit out of focus. Don't you worry. Get us all sorted up. Right, the cockpit is pretty much done and dusted. I'm going to set you to manual. Two seconds. And I'm going to free focus here. There we go. Right. There. It's all that lovely detail we have. I'm just going to put the light over. Let's try that. That's much better. There you go. So there you go. So the fuel tank it has some fuel stains on the top. I see the cockpit, all the harnesses I don't think you just see just there. All received an oil wash. And I don't know if you look closely. 
remember you can see all the temperature gauges right down in there just there you go on the instrument panel board on the right hand side and if you have a look if I just show you we have just down in there some control cables going to the bottom I've settled on um, the DV version uh, the D5 had uh, the standard one, there was a D5 and a D5A D5 had some control cables running from the control stick uh, the disc, you can see that disc just to the bottom just there, just above my, just below my finger and the disc controlled the control wires to the top wing and it ran through this bit, so it's all taped together See the control cables just all in there, but as you can see, it's all beautiful done. And once that's all done, it'll be closed up. And the other side, we have the magneto starter just at the front there, and also, oh, actually, what is that switch? It might be helpful if I did my homework first before I. <laughs> Told you guys, it is a spark advanced lever. There you go. So that is simple as that, guys. From my list. There we go. So it's all going to be literally closed up now and all done. All that lovely detail is going to go into this tiny last little cockpit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have some, put some Tamiya cement just onto the little knobs. Just going to take a quite a bit off there. Put over the fuselage. Across the whole halves, like so. I mainly do it around the cockpit area at the minute. Right, so this is actually the moment of truth. These two pieces need to go together. Quite simple, but they're actually very difficult to still all get in place. So I'm literally going to do the bottom first, make sure the locator pins are lined up, and looking into the cockpit. Refix you again, sorry. There you go. Looking down into the cockpit, making sure everything is going into place. May need some tweezers to help. Okay, that's the first piece in. Don't want to break anything fragile, anything. Hmm. Right, okay. Okay, that's in place. Right, so why isn't that going? Right, there's a bit of a bar that just does not seem it wants to go in. Hmm. Oh, 
whilst that bit come out, I have to put that back in place. It's just that little bar in the middle getting that all lined up. It doesn't help that this control service cable is flying about everywhere. There we go. That's in. Right, some elastic bands around the fuselage. Like so. Make sure this is all into place. Okay, I keep taking that out of frame. Oh no. Oh well, that's going to have to be glued back on. A lot of cockpit parts already have to be glued back on by lots of things. Just have to be squeezed together I reckon. Yeah, right, okay, so it does look like we got a bit of work to do across this fuselage. Got a bit of a gap in the bottom there, but obviously with a bit of a squeeze that all goes in. It's just literally getting all that work done in there. All done and dusted. It's got this bar here. It needs to be pushed back into place. There we go, like so. Actually, that's actually not too bad. And we got this bar that needs to be squoze in, like so. And there we have it, guys. Right, so it literally is just getting all the last little bits and pieces done. Get a bit of elastic band around there to make sure it's all in place. But apart from that, that is virtually everything done. Cop is all lined up and done. So we can keep calm about that, thank God. So, right, so with that done and all in place, you can see there. Again, that is literally most of the detail you'll be able to see from the cockpit, but there we go. Does look smashing, smashing kit, not gonna lie. So, right, with that all done, we're gonna leave that to dry, come back and we're gonna peg the rest of it up, fish on the final touches, and then we'll see about putting all the engine installments in place and we'll get that done and dusted, guys. So, I'll see you in a second. That's 10 minutes of footage, wow. Alright, see you in a bit then. <laughs> 